Welcome to Jadu Lifestyle Podcast, where you can have a life and live it too. The whole intent of our podcast, of this podcast, is to actually help business owners, entrepreneurs, and any like-minded individuals to to gain a different perspective on how they can utilize their skills, their talents to become anything and anybody they want to. What we ask you to is not only to focus on your business, to build your business, but to also look at your gifts and talents. Maybe there's something else that you can offer that will enhance what you're offering. We, we bring you guests every episode who have expertise on different areas of life living and they're also entrepreneurs and business owners. So today is no different. We have Mr. Mike Sisti, did I pronounce your last name correctly, Mr. Sisti? Yes, you did, Tati. Okay. So he's an entrepreneur, but he has actually been in business a long, long time. So let's get him to introduce himself. So, Ms. Mike, tell us a little bit about you. Okay. Yes, I have been in business a long, long time. Uh, my first business venture actually started when I was age 11. And this year I turned 80, and on my 80th birthday, I started another business venture. Um, in between, I have worked for several companies. Uh, I have been an entrepreneur. I have started over 25 businesses. I've also worked for a short period of time. I like to say I went over to the dark side. I actually worked for corporate America for six years which gave me some really incredible experience. Right now, I'm spending my time mostly writing. I do some lecturing, and um, I'm planning on hopefully continuing my business career as long as I'm healthy. Okay. Um, I know you have several books you've written, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Part of your... Sure. Um, your bio that interested me also was uh, you, the humor part of it. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I don't know where the, the sense of humor came from, but going back to grammar school, uh, I was taught in grammar school by the nuns and in high school by the priests. And of course, in that environment, they have very rigid rules of behavior. But despite that, I just love to entertain. So I was always speaking out in class and, and making it fun. Uh, I, I did it well enough that even the teachers enjoyed the banter. So I didn't get reprimanded too often. But what I learned from that very early humor uh, part of my, uh, my personality was I find that I use humor in every task that I have to do particularly if it's a difficult task that I really don't want to do. And so by injecting a little bit of humor, it becomes fun and it, the time passes quicker. And I tend to perform better in the project I happen to be working on. So my life kind of wraps around humor. And so I, I kind of write it into most of my writing, wherever it, uh, it's practical. If I'm writing a press release, for instance, I may not want to use too much humor in that uh, but if i'm writing a feature story for a magazine i certainly want to inject some humor uh, my novels do contain humor and i have written three humor books which are just uh, short stories about situations i've come across where i'm i'm seeing the humor that other people are not seeing and i write about it okay so that's, so... that's my biz my background in that so let's get to where the rubber meets the road. What are you passionate about? What am I passionate about? Uh, I'm passionate about life. Uh, I like to experience as much of life as I can. And again, I, I just constantly look for the humor in every environment. I like uh, people to succeed. I, I particularly am passionate about small business. Uh, having founded over 25 businesses during my career, uh, I am very passionate about small business, both surviving and succeeding. And of course, during this pandemic, uh, that is near impossible. Uh, businesses are failing left and right, and it just 
causes me a lot of pain uh, to see that happening. And of course, there's not much we can do about it right now because, you know, our health comes first and our business activity comes behind that. So um, I would love to see this pandemic behind us and, and hopefully business can, businesses can get back on track and become successful. Yes, I hear you. I hear you. So I have two questions here now that you brought up the pandemic. First of all, how has it affected your business? And secondly, what what can you tell business owners now that they can do during this pandemic to keep their business going? Okay. Uh, as far as business, the pandemic has affected me in two ways. Uh, I founded a company with multiple investors back in 2010. It was a business that sold um, water saving products to hotels and to multifamily housing uh, facilities. Uh, the pandemic has killed that business. Hotels, while they have empty rooms and can install our product, don't have the money to uh, pay for that installation. In the multifamily housing segment, People don't want strangers coming into their house with the fear of the pandemic. So that business has totally evaporated. And because of the pandemic, I launched a small venture. Uh, I launched a website offering a, a water saving product for consumers that they can install in their toilet themselves. I mean, it's a, it's a type of flapper that anyone can install. But people are so focused on just surviving right now. No one is spending money on what they might consider a frivolous item like a replacement flapper unless they need it. So that business is also failing. In fact, I'm just about giving that business up and focusing on other things that I can be doing. I'm working on a couple of other projects that are outside of that arena. But that's how the pandemic has affected me personally. Mm -hmm. It said previously it is affecting me emotionally because I just see all these small businesses uh, restaurants and other businesses small retailers that are just struggling to survive and what what do you think businesses can do now to help themselves through this pandemic I think pandemic is going to have a, a long-term effect on the economy I see business recovering overall, but it's re recovering in different ways. And I think people have to take a hard look at what they're doing during the pandemic to survive, the temporary things that they're doing, and consider them possibly to be permanent. Our whole environment is going to change. I think long term, Less people are going to be working in offices. More people are going to be working from home on a permanent basis. More people are going to be buying products online as opposed to going to retailers. So I think businesses have to, and they are adapting temporarily to this change in our, our direction. But I think this is going to be much longer term than we think. I think our... Uh, resource supply is going to change. Um, I, I think a lot of people are angry with with China for causing this pandemic, and business is also starting to move away from China back to this country and, and to other countries. Uh, it's having a profound impact on transportation, both the delivery of goods from the manufacturer uh, has changed, as well as the purchase of goods by the consumer, which has changed now to online purchasing. So as a result of all that, the logistics business, the trucking business, the transportation business is changing dramatically. They're having difficulty keeping up with it. The post office is having problems making deliveries. Uh, trucking companies, Federal Express, UPS are, are having trouble making deliveries on the schedules that they were. And so you go into stores, you find the shelves are half empty. Not that the product isn't available, it just can't get it to the stores because of the transportation issue. So all of these things are actually impacting our economy 
and it's going to be long term. So I think for businesses to survive, we're going to have to adapt to these changes and find ways to fit into this new environment. Uh, Restaurants are now setting up what they call ghost kitchens, where they're producing uh, food in different, in various, either complete food uh, for delivery, complete meals, or or, uh, components of meals, and delivering them to homes. So less people are going to restaurants. So there's some opportunities there for uh, people working in the ghost kitchen environment or starting a ghost kitchen or starting a delivery service. So all these things are going to come about to become much more permanent. So Uber and Lyft, companies like that, are going to actually benefit from this. So, again, we have to be looking very creatively at different ways that we can fit into this new economy. Uh, Mike, are you a business coach? Yes. Okay. Uh, Yes, I do some business coaching, yes. Okay, so what would you, what is your honest opinion on what would happen after this pandemic to businesses? Some businesses are going to go back to functioning normally. Some of them already are functioning normally because they're already geared to this new economy. Other businesses need to take a hard look at their, uh, their supply line, how that their supplies are coming in and how they're delivering their goods and services. So, uh, if, you know, with more specific information, I could uh, give more specific focus, but I just think people need to be uh, looking at their websites. Their websites need to adapt to this new environment. Uh, communication is so much more radical now. Um, there's a lot less one-on-one in-person communication. So you've got to become much more adept at um, economizing your time on the phone. You need to be using uh, email and and messaging and websites to communicate more than ever before. And you need to make services available through those communication outlets. So these are the things that I think businesses have to look at uh, to adapt to this economy because businesses that are even surviving now may fall by the wayside if they don't keep up with the changes that are happening so rapidly. Um, Do you have the fortitude to tell a business owner that they have to shut down after after evaluating their business? After they what? After you evaluate the business. Do you feel like you're strong enough to tell them they have to close? Uh, Yes. Uh, Failure is is part of business. Uh, I I wrote a book called The Failure Myth. And so we have to accept that failure is is part of doing business. Uh, You don't succeed unless you're prepared to fail. Because if you aren't prepared to fail, you can't take chances. And right now... Businesses need to change, so they need to take chances and try some new things, and the direction they take may not end up being the correct one. Uh, but there are businesses that you know, just will, will have incredible difficulty surviving. So if they don't find ways to change their business model, they will definitely fail. But a business owner can't be afraid of that possibility because it's going to happen. Uh, As I mentioned earlier, I have founded 25 companies. Uh, They weren't all successful. Uh, The last two that I founded, as I mentioned, we only have a colonial organization.